the Reverend Liz Williams of the Wollaston Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Grace and peace to you from God. Welcome to the 45th annual Feast of Lights, an ecumenical service of the Interchurch Council of Wollaston and North Quincy, recorded here in the beautiful sanctuary of the Sacred Heart Church. Welcome to you, wherever you might be joining from, in this format, which is somewhat different from the 44 Feasts of Light that preceded this day. It is my prayer that you would know the light of Christ in your life through this celebration of the light of Christ come to the world. May that light shine for you, whether you are from one of the Christian congregations in Quincy or elsewhere, or you're simply seeking some solace and hope in these challenging times. As I said, I am the Reverend Liz Williams, pastor of the Wollaston Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, and a member of the Interchurch Council. Like many places of worship in our nation and our world, we at the Wollaston Congregational Church have had to learn to adapt to these COVID times. Our adaptation has been to cease gathering in person during the cold winter months and to use Zoom for worship instead. We have been grateful for the technology that allows us to remain connected in spirits while we are physically distanced. And at the same time, we long for the day when it will be safe to gather in person again. Today, the Wollaston and North Quincy churches celebrate the coming of the Magi to the infant Jesus. These wise men came from faraway lands, guided by a star. They came from cultures and traditions that were quite different from those of the people of Israel. And yet they experienced the revelation of God who had come to be with humanity in Bethlehem of Judea. Today, a number of quite different Christian traditions come together to celebrate love made known to the world in Jesus. Each clergy person and each faith community represented here today extends a message of hope and encouragement to you. We are here for you. Our churches are alive and well, even as we are adapted for the COVID pandemic. If you are feeling lost or lonely in this strange new world, reach out to us and reach out to our churches. Let us know that you would like to connect. We pray that by joining this service today, God would bless us with a renewed sense of hope here in the Quincy community and in this, our state, our nation, and our world. Amen. I'm Father Chris Capaldo at the parish of St. Chrysostom's Episcopal Church 
here in Quincy. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I am a handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we hear in this gospel passage of the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary, a gift of hope that God has bestowed upon humanity of love and new life almost 2,000 years ago. May we never forget that hope of love, life, in Jesus Christ that has been given to us still today. Because as the Gospel says, nothing is impossible with God. May we have a blessed year. Amen. My name is Reverend Doug Gray. I'm the pastor at the First Church of Squantum, a congregational church in North Quincy. And I'm here to share with you a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Christmas is often different than when than we expect, isn't it? Especially this last year. I have a story from pre-COVID days of a Christmas in which Jennifer, a pretty 18-year-old girl, went shopping the week before Christmas, and she sauntered up to the curtain counter and was trying to decide which of the, the many types of tinsel she wanted to buy. Finally, she made her choice and asked the awkward young man behind the counter, how much is this gold tinsel garland? The awkward young man pointed to the Christmas mistletoe above the counter and said, this week we have a special offer, just one kiss per yard. Wow, that's great, Jennifer said. I'll take 12 yards. With expectation and anticipation written all over his face, the boy measured out the 12 yards of tinsel, wrapped up the garland, and gave it to Jennifer. She nodded to the scruffy old man who had been browsing through the Christmas trees and said, my grandfather will settle up the bill. <laughs> In fact, many of us feel like there's been a bait and switch that goes on for us at Christmas time. And where does that feeling come from? What does our passage for today have to teach us about living through Christmas? If it's any encouragement, Mary and Joseph must have felt the same with the first Christmas. Joseph and Mary got engaged, but then Mary gets pregnant, and it's not Joseph's baby. They work their way past that with God's help, and then just as the baby is about to come, the government tells them they have to make a trip to register for taxes. For taxes? Really? And then, of course, there was the whole inn manger fiasco. Clearly, this is not what they were hoping or counting on. And the child still came. A beautiful, wonderful baby who had something more, was something more. In Mary and Joseph, we see the beauty of faith. As they let all of what must have been heartache and frustration evaporate in what was beautiful and wonderful and more than wonderful, about this baby. In Hebrews we read, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In the midst of all the heartache and frustration, perhaps faith is just recognizing the grace that is with us. As we leave behind a Christmas different than one any of us have ever known, we can be encouraged that Christmas has always been different than people expected. In fact, that's been God's plan from the beginning, even before Joseph and Mary were involved. The story is told that a woman was doing some last-minute shopping with her kids in tow, and she was really having a hard time during this Christmas shopping trip. 
as she kind of moved her way into an elevator, she said, I don't know who's responsible for all this Christmas stuff, but they ought to arrest him, string him up, and shoot him. And someone from the back of the elevator quietly said, don't worry, they already arrested him, whipped him, spat on him, beat him, stripped him, taunted him, and nailed him to a cross. As we leave Christmas, and thankfully 2020, let us remember God's passion for us and Jesus' passion on the cross. Let us remember the faith of those who can still recognize the grace of Christmas and 2021, even when it's different from what we expect or want. Jesus was not what people expected then and now, but still grace comes for us. Still grace comes for those of us who have the heart to see it. May it be so. Amen. lesson, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Happy New Year in Christ! The shepherds were with sheep in the field peacefully as usual. Suddenly a great multitude of heavenly hosts appeared with angels in the sky and were praising and glorifying the Lord. While the shepherds were totally overwhelmed, the angel told them, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for everyone. Upon hearing the proclamation, their hearts were filled with great joy. Sir James Young Simpson in England was a genius medical doctor. He earned worldly fame by discovering the chloroform, which is still used for anesthesia during the surgical operations. In his old age, his disciples asked him what would be the most important discovery in his life. He said, the most important discovery in my life was the fact that Jesus Christ died and resurrected 
for a pitiful sinner like me. They were startled by his answer because they expected he would be proud of his discoveries. For Simpson, the discovery of the salvation in Jesus Christ was the most valuable good news throughout his life. Jesus Christ is the good news. Let's take the good news into our hearts as the true Savior and have great joy and victory throughout the new year. God bless you. Amen. I am Jung Wook Hong, pastor at Quincy Community United Methodist Church. My reading today is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is shepherd by people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until he stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they kneeled down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and more. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The journey of the wise men in reading are like our journey of life. They find something meaningful in their lives, 
and decide to follow it with all their heart. It may be their dreams, life goals, or visions. They have a purpose and passion, so they do it diligently. And they run into King Herod, who is powerful but dangerous. They naively ask Herod about the Messiah, and Herod tries to trick them in order to maintain his privilege. I bet the three wise men have some doubts too. Along the way, they probably ask themselves if they are doing it right, or if the star is right. They are walking a thin line between belief and uncertainty. This is strikingly similar with our journey of life. We always walk a thin line between uncertainty and belief. At every moment and every step, we are forced to choose either of them. And we have mixed and complicated feelings and outcomes. We have joys and doubts, displeasure and delight, feelings of failure and success, and so on. Also, we may, into, we may run into some people like Herod, powerful but dangerous. We may be tricked or disappointed, or we may even get hurt. So this journey is difficult. We just want to live in faith of God with human dignity and respect for life. But sometimes it just feels like we are doing it all wrong. It is so hard that we often want to give up. However, I believe what is true is always around us. It always leads our way as the star leads the wise man. Only if we want to see it, if we try to hear it, if we make efforts to follow, then we will find it and feel it and see it. So let's not lose our hope, get our strength again from time to time. Give yourself a break, rest some, and it is okay. Embrace yourself. Give yourself lots of kind words. And let's take it slowly. Just do not lose our hope and keep following it. As we follow it slowly, we will realize what is really important in our life, always with us, around us, and among us which has not changed a bit. Love, peace, freedom, forgiveness, reconciliation, solidarity, and so on. They were important in 2,000 years ago. They are important now. They are essential parts of our life. God breathes them into us as essential part of our life. Time may change mountains and rivers, but it cannot change what is in our heart. So let's keep our hopes high if we do not lose what is true to us. Together we can overcome whatever may come, the virus, this situation, and any difficulties. God is with us, Emmanuel. Amen.
Good afternoon. I am Father Stanley Rousseau from uh, Divine Mercy Parish, and I'm very pleased to be here today uh, participating in this 45th annual Feast of Lights Epiphany celebration. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Those they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under foot. You are the light of the world. The city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it on the bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Never on earth I have read a birth story like uh, Jesus' birth story. There might be something special here. Indeed, there is something not only special, but also divine. It is about the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, and the Son of Man. He is the Son of God because he was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he shares the same nature with God. He is the Son of Man because he was conceived like you and me in the womb of a woman. Before Jesus' coming, darkness surrounded the world. Still today, we are surrounded with darkness. Such darkness is manifested in the form of all sorts of sins. And today, we are living in a society that has lost the sense of sins. Sometimes, it's difficult for us to identify and distinguish sins from virtues. Like the people of Israel, we need Jesus to enlighten us. From the very beginning, Jesus' society did not welcome him. Would our today's society, with all its presumptions and all its uh, prejudices and all its anti-values, welcome Jesus? Today, our world still believes in superficial looks or vain attractions. Our society evaluates women and men based upon what they have and not about who they are. Accordingly, the mystery of incarnation has taught us God's ways are not our ways. 
during this Christmas season, we need to meditate more upon the ways God is manifesting himself. God's ways are visible to those he gives the grace to see. In fact, God's presence can be very humble, very subtle, revealed in the simplest way possible, maybe in a little baby smile, in a generous heart, in a welcoming gesture, in an act of kindness, in the sharing of good wishes during his holiday season, and so on. We only need to pay attention and focus on what is essential. May Jesus, light of the world, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, be with us to save us and protect us. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. My name is the Reverend Alyssa Olson from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in North Quincy. And it is a great pleasure to be with you all in this way today. You know, for me, Christmas is the ultimate story about showing up. Right? The angel shows up to Mary to tell her she's pregnant. Mary shows up to Elizabeth to have some companionship in the waiting. Joseph travels to Bethlehem because of the census to show up. God shows up in the manger in the form of a little baby. The shepherds show up. More angels show up. A star shows up. And even the wise men show up. There is a whole lot of showing up that happens in the Christmas story. Usually, I'd be asking my congregation, be asking um, folks, how they are going to show up in the new year, which is a little bit different right now when we can't show up in person the way I prefer to show up, in the flesh, face to face, to give people hugs. But that question still lingers. How do we show up for our community, for this community of Quincy, when we can't always show up the way we want to show up? I want you all to know that one of the ways that our faith communities, these churches will show up for you, is in our prayers. Our prayers for your health and safety, for your employment, for our leaders, for all of you. So I invite you right now to show up with me in that way, in prayer. And if you are praying along with me at home, you can respond every time I say, um, Lord, hear our prayer, you can say, or when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you can say, hear our prayer. So let us all come together in prayer. 
Gracious God, we pray for the church and for our neighbors of diverse faith traditions. We pray that we may work together to let your light shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for all of your good creation, for the beauty in our neighborhoods, for Wollaston Beach and Marina Bay, for the dog parks, for the smiles we see as we walk in our streets. Help us to care for that earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our leaders, for the mayor of this city, that they have wisdom and discernment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the suffering, for those who are lonely, for those who are sick, for the ones that care for the sick, for those without homes, for those without food. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, this Christmas, we also pray for all those who have joined you, who have passed away, whether through COVID or for other reasons. Give comfort to their families and their friends and be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we ask for joy, for joy to spark up in the lives of the city's children and families and faith communities, that we may not be too bogged down by the hard things to notice the good things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we commend all these prayers to you and all the prayers that are spoken across the city, spoken out loud and in the depths of our hearts, knowing that you hear each and every one of them. In your name we pray, amen. be with you. I'm Pastor Adolf Wismar, retired 
for many years pastor and now pastor emeritus of Wollaston Lutheran Church. And I'm here to invite your generous support of our local charities. Down through the years, the Interchurch Council has been very supportive of our local charities, and indeed, for some of them, has formed the inspiration for their founding. As I understand it, the charity today known as Interfaith Social Services, formerly Protestant Social Service Bureau, was founded before our interfaith social, before our interchurch council. Uh, but we support them nonetheless in the fine work that they are doing, especially in the food program. Also, there is a charity that has come and gone that we still give thanks to God for. It was founded by one of the members of our interchurch council, Esther Sanger, called the Quincy Crisis Center and that sadly is no longer on the scene. But in this very church at Sacred Heart, we held the meeting that was the inspiration for founding the Quincy Interfaith Sheltering Coalition, which has become Father Bill's and Mainspring, now the largest provider of services to homeless people in southeastern Massachusetts. And our Interchurch Council also was the foundation for the Dove program for battered women's shelter. Obviously, the local uh, charities are points of light in the human darkness that surrounds us. And so I invite your generous support of these in the season of Epiphany where we celebrate Jesus and the light of the world that he brought we also remember that as his ambassadors, you and I are his small points of light, and that we too are called to do our bit to bring light into the world of darkness. And I would wish each and every one of you, as you express your generous support, a blessed Epiphany season. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is John Lanham. I am the service director of Father Bills and Mainsprings Northern Region, which includes Quincy and the surrounding communities. For nearly 40 years, Father Bills and Mainspring has been committed to its mission of ending homelessness and providing hope to our most vulnerable neighbors. In Quincy, this mission was co-founded by several members of the local faith community. That includes Father Bill McCarthy, Pastor Wismar, and Sister Miriam Patrice McKeon. During this difficult time, while many of us can't be together, we're grateful to have the opportunity to connect with you during this year's virtual Feast of Light service. It's been a tough time for all of us, particularly our neighbors experiencing homelessness, and for the local individuals and families facing housing insecurity during this crisis. But at Father Bills in Mainspring, we remain hopeful and optimistic. And the reason why is because of all of you, because of our community and our neighbors. Throughout this pandemic, no matter how steep the challenge, our generous supporters have continued to step up to provide support for our organization and the people we serve. The Quincy Interfaith community has been extraordinary. We're regularly getting calls and emails from local churches each time with the same question, what can we do to help? You've been with us the entire time, whether that's delivering bag lunches, preparing meals for us, for our shelter guests, or making donations to make sure we can continue to operate our additional spaces which have been crucial for allowing us to keep people socially distanced over the past several months. A few weeks ago, we were in need of a Christmas tree uh, and decorations for Father Bill's place. And within a few days of putting the word out, you were at our shelter dropping off items to help bring holiday cheer to our guests, many of whom weren't able to see their loved ones this year due to COVID-19. You are the reason we have hope during these trying times. Your faith in action continues to inspire us and although the path ahead is very challenging, we know that together we'll get through this. So thank you for all of your support, and we look forward to continuing to work with all of you in the future. Greetings, members of the Inner Church Council and your congregations. My name is Sue Chandler. I'm executive director of Dove, Domestic Violence Ended. Dove, as many of you know, probably better than me, has been around for over 40 years, originally co-founded by the St. Boniface Church, formerly, 
in Germantown who started out our hotline back in 1978. Um, we deeply, deeply appreciate your support. Um, many of you are acutely aware of what's happening during the public health pandemic. And in fact, the conditions that keep us safest during the public health pandemic are the same conditions that create an increased danger for victims of domestic violence. Um, working from home, being at home, uh, parenting, watching uh, and supporting children who are schooling virtually, but many of the folks that we work with are really under the watchful eye of an abusive partner. Um, survivors and victims are facing greater danger, more injuries, um, much more severe domestic violence while they're cooped up with abusive partners. And more and more people have reached out to us this year for help than ever before. Uh, it's been quite overwhelming and we're working hard to respond to people's needs. Uh, your support directly goes to help us do that. So more folks are in need of basic supplies, um, personal care items, food, clothing for children. We are also um, supporting people who are facing uh, hardship given the eviction crisis, the moratorium being lifted in December. So assisting people with rental arrears, um, with utilities payments, trying to clear credit, um, storage costs for personal items when folks are relocating, uh, relocation assistance. Uh, so lots and lots of different things. We also helped um, over 100 families during uh, December for the Holiday Assistance Program. So your support is critical, goes directly to the victims that we support, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, hope you all are well. Uh, best wishes for the year ahead. Thank you again. Hello, my name is Rick Doan. I'm the Executive Director of Interfaith Social Services. I want to thank you for this donation, this support. Uh, you know, we've been here, Interfaith has been here in Quincy for over 70 years helping families in need. And we were founded in the midst of a crisis and the houses of worship here in this community have sustained us throughout this public health emergency. It is incredible to see the donations of food, of diapers, personal hygiene products that have come in. The donations that we receive, the financial donations, have made it possible for us to purchase fresh produce, protein, and other items when literally our shelves have been cleaned out. Um, we have never experienced a need like we have seen it, and we are able to meet that need and help our neighbors in need because of the support we have from our neighbors, from our partners, from the houses of worship. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Hello, everyone. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Chelsea Maynard. I'm one of the pastors at Wollaston Church of the Nazarene. Um, if you would hear the word of the gospel this morning from Matthew, 8, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. This Christmas season, we celebrated the coming of Emmanuel of God with us. It's been a hard year to be with people, with social distancing and loss and division. And even this week, we see extreme and violent evidence of the turmoil around us. And yet, Jesus promises us this. I am with you always. Though mountains be shaken, still his unfailing love for us will never be shaken. There is nothing, neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, nor death, nor life, nothing that is able to separate us from his love. My prayer for you this new year is this, that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is with you, that we are not alone. The Lord be with you. May God, who has called you out of darkness into this wonderful light, 
Pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you so a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Nature sing, and heaven and nature sing.